everybody, CW here. I got a couple more air guns to show you. I was thought thinking about doing these separate, but they're really, they're really all very, very similar. So I decided to put them all together and I'll take them apart or take them off the bench here and show them to you one at a time. But starting up at the top there, that is a 1322 classic pump up pneumatic air pistol that I've got a buttstock on. And I really like these buttstocks. They they just make the gun entirely more shootable, more accurate, more consistent shooting. They they just they're just a true asset to the to the style of gun. So I put them on all of them. So the top one is a 22. The next one down is an old backpacker. Uh, 1389 was the model. And this one I've changed quite a bit. It's actually a five millimeter. It's got green stocks, which were common for the backpackers of the day, but it's got a different style loading gate. This flips up, and I'll show you that individually in a minute. I've also got a, 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 lead, a lead dust collector on it from the same company that was on the um, little pistol, the, 40, the 2240. Same company, just a little bit longer. The next one down is a new or newer model backpacker. That one's in 22 caliber, so it's a 1389. I believe it's a G, but I'll show you that in a minute. And this bottom one, this one here, is the one is a 1377 classic that I've gone through completely. And I'll show you that one first, and we'll go in depth with that one the most because some of the modifications done here have been done to the other ones. So stand by, let me clear the bench. All right, everybody, here's the backpackers. This one is probably, this, this green one here is probably my favorite because I'm, I kind of really lean towards the five millimeter as my favorite air gun caliber. It, it offers a really good balance. 17s are, are great for speed. Um, in hunting circles with air guns, it's said that the the 17s. Now, I'm not talking about the super high powered ones. This is before, before it really had all the the nitro piston style uh, ultra high power Springer type guns. Um, although you know some of the high power ones have been around for a long time, they've been out of the out of the realm of reality for for a lot of guys just because of cost. You know, they're they're high high dollar expensive European air guns that are literally the price of high-powered rifles um, here in the United States back in the 70s, um, I'm speaking. So, 5mm really gave us a, a, a really nice balance with the power that's available. Now, air guns are kind of kind of along the lines or kind of parallel black powder, meaning you've only got so much uh, power on tap and the only advantage that you can really do is to go heavier in your projectile weight. Um, you're really limited to what you can get. And, and with air guns, it's, it's the speed of sound. Once you break that uh, threshold, uh, it's really, really hard to keep these pellets, the projectiles that these guns shoot, uh, stabilized. It just, it just doesn't really work well. And once you get really across that threshold with power um, and some of the new guns you're seeing, uh, they're actually shooting slugs. They're not even shooting pellets anymore. They're shooting regular bullets and they're, they're doing pretty well, but that's newer technology. That's not what these are. So with these kind of guns, um, uh, you stepped up to 22 when you had little larger critters and that was pretty much the tops. You know, you didn't see the 25s, the 30s, the 35s that you do today. You just, 22 was the, was the big guy. And it was what you used for bigger critters. So 20, 22 was for fur, and the 17 was was for feathers. And that was just you know kind of I don't want to say tongue in cheek because it was it was true, but it was because of you know based upon what was available to most people at the time. So five millimeter came along, and it was really um, a strange thing for us because you know we're we're not. We're not in the metric system, and uh, Sheridan products really 
took it to heart and it was it was what they offered it was it was all they offered that was that was what a sheridan was five millimeter and uh benjamin a lot of people uh confused the two um i don't want to get off on that topic because we're talking about these guns but benjamin's were available in 17 and 22 and never 20 and never five millimeter crossman's um were offered in 17 and 22 and only special occasions in five millimeter so I happened to find this barrel, and I don't remember where. It was probably in, in a forum, you know, for sale somewhere, and I, and I picked it up. But it's a brass 5mm barrel that I was not able to buy new at Crossman. They discontinued them. And it was set up for a, I don't remember the model. <clears throat> It was it was right along the lines of this backpacker backpacker. It was this this particular style of firearm of a uh, air gun, but not not this exact model. And you can tell here by the by the band that's cut in the barrel here for the barrel band for what this is designed for. And then the barrel only sticks out just a little bit where it should stick out a little longer like you see over on that one that this is a newer model backpacker um i forget what they called it there was a name for it uh like apocalypse or something like that um i'll think of it here in a minute i'll think of it here and i'll just tell you i'll tell you what i think of it anyway so this is the newer model and there is some differences um like this one here uses the bolt action that's pop that's uh you know so popular on these and this is plastic zytel whatever material and this this one here is still bone stock i haven't built it up yet i got this one from my pop just to have something to to play around with but he was more fond of the brake barrel so he just bought himself a a brake barrel um camo and uh it's gone through its break in and it's shooting really good for him so he doesn't really use this so I brought it back home so I can finish the upgrades for it and, uh, you know, just work on it a little bit. But this one here, again, it's an older model, older version. And this is metal, but it's like that pot metal. Not really good steel, it's just pot metal. But it's rigid and it serves its purpose way better than the plastic. Like, you can't mount a scope on that. First, there's no provisions. But second of all, it's just, it's plastic. It's going to move, it's going to fall off, it's going to be a problem. This one is metal, even though it's pot metal, it's good, good service. Now, this is an old Bushnell Sport View Custom 22 scope, two to seven, three quarter inch diameter with integral base. And it really lends itself nicely to an air gun. Um, got variable power. There's no parallax adjustment, but it's made for a 22, so it's short. It works really good on this gun, and I like it. But to load this one, it's got this like lever thing, and you just tip that up like that. And what you get on the other side is like a nylon hole port. You just stick the pellet in there and it holds the pellet and then you close it and it aligns it with the system in there. So when you cock it, because you know these got to be cocked every time, you pump it and cock it and you pull the trigger and it fires. And it works really well. The five millimeter pellets are, are always heavier than the 17s. And you can get them um, from a couple different companies that will be as heavy as any 22. Um, the ones that I, I like are the, the Sam Yangs. And I don't know if they're even available anymore. I haven't looked in forever. But they were, uh, they're made in Korea, I believe. And I don't know, I imagine it was South Korea, but I'm not sure. But I know it was Korea they came out of. And they were kind of... So so quality. They weren't awesome, great, um, but they were they were pretty good. And I was just looking through my photo bucket account on these, and I didn't find any. Um, I didn't find any really good pictures of the build, like I had with the last one. So, unfortunately, I don't have anything in, anything in here. Now this one here was not. I didn't flat top this piston. I didn't upgrade. I just resealed it and put it back together and it's working really good now this one here the new backpacker and this is the the 1389g g series and that one i think i'm gonna flat top the piston and change the the pump 
the flat top the valve and flat top the piston and, and change it all out so I can get some more power um, out of this one. Um, this one's 22 caliber. And again, that one's five millimeter. Um, and I also something here, this is, this is um, heater pipe insulation. And uh, when you buy this, you get a whole tube of it, you know, along like an eight foot piece of it. And it's got a glue line. So you pull the tape apart and you just push it together. So you just put it on here, cut it to length and stick it on. And it really works well to give your cheek a little bit of rise because it's a little bit low. It's made for open sights. And it gives your cheek just a little bit of rise to get a better cheek weld for, for the scopes. Now, it's not necessary, but it's just, it's something that was pretty neat. There's a lot of customization that guys have done to these uh, stocks. And some of it's pretty, pretty ingenious. But uh, that's the extent I went because it served my purpose. So these are pretty neat guns. They're accurate. They shoot well. They're a lot of fun. Um, I don't, I just, I don't even remember the power that I was getting out of the five millimeter. It's not, it's nothing great. Uh, it's probably, it's right in line with the 17 and the 22. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say the 20, the, the 17 probably got upper fives, 500 feet per second, something like that. Maybe not upper fives, maybe 500 feet per second. And uh, the 22 probably got 450. I don't. I, I'm just guessing. I just don't remember. So the five millimeter is going to probably be right in between them, just based on pellet weight. Um, the pellet weight on the five millimeters is closer to the 22. Uh, the lightest 22s are still way heavier than the 17s, but the 17s, you can get 17s um, that are the same weight as 22s. Um, 17 is just more popular, so you, there's more options out there. But uh, here you go. Here's two more really cool air guns. And again, this that green one's probably my favorite. Let's see if I can get you a close-up of the model. The model here that you can read. I don't know if I can get that any better. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit without going nuts. I don't know if you can read that or not. Backpacker model 1389 and this is probably uh i'm gonna say a 70s maybe maybe early 80s gun and this one here is a is a 2000s this one's only a couple years old maybe 10 years old at most all right everybody hope you enjoyed it these are fun ones um if you haven't had one of these uh you know shame on you you should get one they are a lot of fun God bless.